get i still have this freaking cold I just uh but um anyway i'll try to get through this this is kind of a brutal story i knew a little bit about this i didn't know the whole thing it concerns this guy ferdinand bosia aka the shadow i don't know where that came from the shadow but anyway bosia was a small time guy uh, he was a gambler mostly. He was an ex-con. He had done six years at Trenton State for murder. But I have another report that said he was there for shooting. Some, so I don't know what the story is. But anyway, he did six years. So at one point, he helped Vito Genovese set up a rigged car game by providing the mark, the guy they would steal from. So Genovese and his top guy, Mike Miranda, they took the guy for about $160,000. Now, what you need to know is prior to the game, Bosia had stuck up a liquor store that was owned by a guy named Tony Bender, Tony Strollo, who was a powerful, powerful mafioso and a close friend of Genovese. And for some reason, Bosia got a pass. I don't know how that came, to, but he got a pass. And so that explains why, in order to stay in Genovese's good favors, he comes up with this mark and they take 160000 But Bosia, I, I don't know if this guy is, maybe he just wasn't very bright, he assumed he was going to get a cut from the scam, about $35,000. And he goes to Genovese and says, where's my $35,000? Genovese says, I'm not paying you. You're lucky you're not dead. He's persistent. He won't let it go. So but, so Genovese thinks, you know what? It's cheaper to kill this guy, cheaper, faster, better than pay him. So he tells Mike Miranda, take care of this. So Miranda brings in Willie Gallo and Ernest the Hawk Rupolo to murder Bosia. So Miranda told Rupolo to kill Bosia, and he, when he's done with that, to kill Gallo as well, since Gallo was Bosia's partner when he was robbing the liquor store. By the way, Rupolo's name came from, uh, he had a bent, sharp nose, and his face was very sharp when he was younger, very thin. He looked like a bird, uh, the hawk or whatever they gave him the name. So uh, he was also weird. He wore a white eye patch. I don't know what was wrong with his eye, but he said it had been shot out by a mobster and that he later shot that mobster five times. Uh, I don't know. Can you get shot in the eye and, and have it taken out and live? It's, anyway, so Rapulo is introduced to Miranda by this Brooklyn gangster, uh, Cosmos Gus Frasca. And according to Rupolo's testimony, Miranda said to him, Frasca tells me you are a good boy. You can do a good job. I want Bosia and Gallo. They're no good. I want you to put them on the spot so they can be killed. So in other words, set them up. He apparently knew both of them. Rapulo then went with Miranda to a restaurant on Mulberry Street, and he introduced him to Vito Genovese, whom he was told to call Don Viton. According to Rapulo, Genovese referred to Bosia as a cokey bastard, and Gallo, who lives on 45 Wither Street, i put a picture there for you, as a pimp bastard. So bastard apparently was one of his favorite words. Anyway, Bosia and Gallo were really hated. On the Nobody liked these guys. They were a pain in the ass. So Miranda remembers that, I'm sorry, so uh, Rapulo remembers Miranda telling him, they can, we, you can kill them cowboy if you need to. That was order was out for anybody in the mob. Cowboy meant they could just walk up and shoot them dead on the street, no matter where they were. Anyway, later on, the orders get changed. They tell, uh, now this is according to Rupo. He says he's only to murder Bosia and not Gallo. Now remember, all these this information is coming from Apulo, who would later try to kill Gallo and go to prison for that. I think he was lying. I think Rapulo and Gallo walked in, they shot Bosia, and then later on he tried to kill Gallo, but he, I guess he figures, they got me on trying to kill Gallo. There's not a lot I can do about that, but I'll just lie about killing Bosia, right? And Gallo, who survived all that, he's not about to say, yeah, I killed Bosia. So that's, I think that's probably what happened. But anyway, on September 19, 1934, they go to Brooklyn and they murder uh, Bosia. It's about 12.30 in the afternoon. Bosia, who lived at 137 DeVoe Street, still there, I put a picture in for you, with his mother, brother, and sisters, was inside the Cristofolo Club at 533 Metropolitan Avenue. It's like a, a you know, neighborhood Italian club. Uh, you had coffee and that sort of play cards. The place has around 24, 25 people in it. These two gunmen walk in, whoever they were. They show their pistols. Now, Willie Gallo was a member of the club, so he was a known person there. But anyway, Bosia's uncle, Benny Bosia, who's a proprietor, he says, look, 
we don't want a problem here. Just take any money you want and leave. And one of the gunmen said, this is not a holdup, gentlemen. All we want is that rat. And they pointed to Bosia, who was seated at a pinochle table with three other guys. The gunman ordered everybody to stand up, and they said, we want you, Bosia, stand over there. And they pointed to um, a telephone booth in the corner. For those of you, I can't believe I have to tell this. A telephone booth was a, a thing you stood in, and it was a phone, and you shut the glass door. It was all glass. It was really quiet. It really did kill the conversation. You couldn't hear it generally outside the telephone booth. Um, and there was like a little thing uh, you could lean your elbow on. There's a little tiny seat in some of them. So that's what a telephone booth was if you never saw one. Uh, um, I think now how unhealthy they were, you know? You went in there and babbled on these phones that God knows who had spit on that before. Uh, and they were very heavy. You know, today we have these little dinky phones, those black phones. Boy, they're not... Uh, so yeah, that's why you leaned on them, you know. Anyway, and it cost ten cents to make a call. Whoa! And later on, it went up to a whopping twenty-five cents. Uh, anyway, so Bosio starts to walk towards the phone booth. We've established what that is, and the gunman uh, he says, "Look, don't shoot me. I'm a good fellow." To which the gunman says, "You're a rat in Jersey. You're a rat in Jersey. You're a rat in Brooklyn. And now, if you want to pray, make it snappy." Uh, you know, bear in mind. Uh, I mean, I got that from two newspaper accounts. You know, late thirties, forties. A lot of these reporters, they didn't. Live, they thought a story could be snapped up a little bit, put a little fire in there. They made up a conversation. It happened a lot. A lot of these reporters out and out worked for the gangsters. You could pay them. You know, Capone loved to pay people. Luciano paid reporters. So to get good profile for themselves. Uh, a lot of gangsters paid these reporters to leave them alone, so they never appeared in the, in the newspaper. So anyway, who knows if that conversation happened. But anyway, they moved within five feet of Bosia, and they, they pulled out the, and they, they shot him four times in the chest and once in the right hand, and he's, they leave him dead on the floor. Two other gangsters, uh, Frank Napoliano and Joe Dagnisi, had been shot in the same neighborhood just a few weeks before. <laughs> Pardon me. So Vito Genovese and Miranda... Um, they tell uh, they tell Rapolo, look, wait to kill Gallo till we tell you Bosia is dead. So Rapolo and this guy Rosario Salo Sali Sali Palomiri, they take the Haw uh, they take him. He's a friend of the Hawks from prison. They take Gallo out to Coney Island. They say they're gonna have a good dinner, and they have their dinner, and they're waiting to find out if Bosia is actually dead or not, and. Uh, they start to get Gallo drunk. So they, now that he's drunk, they get him in the car under the pretense of taking him to a movie. They all want to go see a movie. So they're driving along when Sally Palmatier is in the back of the car. The hawk is driving. Rapulo pulls out his pistol, puts it to Gallo's temple, and pulls the trigger three times. Nothing happened. Misfire. So Rapulo later told investigators that Gallo's shocked, and he turns to me and says, what the hell are you doing? And Rapolo said, nothing. I'm only kidding with you. The gun ain't loaded. Well, Gallo obviously was drunk. I mean, he let it go. Uh, this is a professional gangster. He let it go. So it, 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 to prove he was drunk, he stayed in the car with him. So Rapolo drives to his girlfriend's house. He says, look, I got to drop the gun off. I don't want to go drive around with a gun. He goes in the house, oils up the gun a lot, tries it, I guess, and then comes back out. They drive to 606, oh, 6603 13th Avenue in Bensonhurst. And they stopped the car. Both Palmyra and Rapolo fired nine shots in Gallo's direction. Remarkably, I mean, it's a small car. They only hit him four times. Uh, so they assume he's dead, and they, they toss him out of the car, and they speed away. But they forgot. I think they were drunk, too, frankly. They forgot that Miranda gave him specific instructions. They said, douse Gallo in gasoline oil and set him on fire. I want to send a message to everybody. You don't screw around with us. You know, you don't rob us and you don't come for money when you don't deserve it. They forgot. They didn't. Uh, it sounds like they didn't even have the gasoline to do it. Right? So Gallo, is, he lives, which is remarkable. He turns in Rapolo and Palmieri, uh, Palmieri and the police to the police. And he implicates Genovese in the Bosia murder. Uh, September 21th, Miranda has this guy, little Sally Sal Lambrino, 
who was with the mob until the 80s, 70s, he drives her polo and Primera up to Springfield, Mass, so they can lay low. They'll be under the protection of the Genovese fraction up there. Uh, this guy named Nick Camerata, who was in the mob for decades and decades later. So Palmira, by the way, gets suspicious, and he leaves. He goes back to New York. He figures they're going to kill him up there. And uh, Anyway... One thing led to another. They're both arrested. Rapulo and Premier are arrested. They're tried. They're convicted. They're given 20 years for attempted murder of Gallo. And then Rapulo thinks, I I'm not going to jail for this. So he testifies against Genovese that Genovese ordered the murder of Bosia. Uh, by the way, as a side note, in 1955, Rapulo's brother, uh, 1950 rather, Rapulo's brother is called Billy the Burglar. That was his name. Was arrested for selling an unwed girl's baby to a newer couple. What a guy. Uh, as a result of Rapullo's testimony, in 1944, a jan grand jury indicted Miranda, Genovese, uh, gangster Pete DeFeo, George Smurra, S-M-U-R-R-A, and Gus Farsky uh, for the murder of Bosia. And we all know that Genovese fled the country, and he came back. There was just, he had killed the witnesses, so the case collapsed against him and all the other guys. In 1964, Ropillo, he's now served nine years and he's released from prison. Well, he's brutally murdered. Uh, they slashed him with knives, um, they shot his body full of bullets, and they tossed him into the Jamaica Bay over in Queens. He'd been missing for about a week when they found the body. There was a rope around his neck, uh, his hands, and his legs. Um, the rope was tied to a chain and in turn, that chain was fastened to a heavy cinder block. He'd been dead for at least 10 days. His wife reported him missing. The judge, Judge Leipowitz, who had sentenced him to prison uh, some years before, said, look, it would be suicide for you to try to leave prison. Just do your time. And Rapullo said to him, look, don't worry about it, judge. I'm going to take my chances. Well, guess what?